Would you welcome our Congress president, Brother Brian Kinsey. I appreciate the opportunity to be able to share the Word of God with you this morning. There's a beautiful atmosphere of anointing in this place today. I want to thank Brother Anthony and Sister Mickey, Elder Brother and Sister Mangan, for the tremendous impact they have had on my life in ministry. Especially during the time that my family and I had the privilege of being a part of this local church. They changed my life. And I want to thank them for that. And I want you to just give a, a hand clap of praise to the Lord with me for that. I honor my former pastors. Because of the times has been a very powerful spiritual influence in my life. And I hope today by the help of the Lord that I will be able to give back just a little part of what I have received down through the years. And I believe that I have heard from the Lord. I've sensed an anointing of the Holy Ghost on the United Pentecostal Church and on our preachers that are so hungry for revival. It's never been like this. I've never felt the hunger and the desire. And it does, we don't even care who's going to have the revival or who's going to get the growth as long as it happens everywhere for everyone in every district all over the world. And I know that what you're going to hear this morning is going to be a slight echo of what you already heard last night. And I'll be honest with you, it troubled me just a little bit, and I thought about changing my message. But God brought a scripture to my mind in the book of Ezekiel about the sounding again of the mountains. Mountains create an echo effect, and I really believe the Lord spoke to me, and he said, when you enter m mountain territory, you can expect echoes. So as we climb to higher ground, Let's hear a sounding again of the same word that has brought us to this point. A word that has stirred our hearts and moved us to worship, to prayer, to soul winning, to fasting. That word never need die in our movement or in our lives. Let it sound again and again and again. If you have your Bibles, I'd appreciate it if you would turn with me to Daniel chapter 9 and verse 20. Daniel was positioned by God to receive a communique from heaven that would reveal God's plan for the new millennium. He got the plan for the nation of Israel. He got the plan for all the world ruling nations. And he also got the vision of the coming of Messiah with his mission and his power message. And I want you to know something in this service this morning that Daniel could not receive that communique until he was touched five times by an angelic visitor. And when he received those five touches, it put him in touch. And God was able to give him the complete plan. I believe that God wants to touch us in these five ways. And I want him to minister to us in the Holy Ghost this morning. I want to receive that touch of anointing. And I want to read to you about the second touch. And whilst I was speaking and praying and confessing my sin and the sin of my people Israel, and presenting my supplication before the Lord my God for the holy mountain of my God. Yea, while I was speaking in prayer, even the man Gabriel, whom I had seen in the vision at the beginning, being caused to fly swiftly, touched me 
about the time of the evening oblation. And he informed me and talked with me and said, Oh, Daniel, I am now come forth to give thee skill and understanding. At the beginning of thy supplications, the commandment came forth, and I am come to show thee, for thou art greatly beloved. Therefore understand the matter and consider the vision. Seventy weeks are determined upon thy people and upon thy holy city to finish the transgression and to make an end of sins and to make reconciliation for iniquity and to bring in everlasting righteousness and to seal up the vision and prophecy and to anoint the most holy. I want to preach to you from this text, touched at evening, touched at evening. Let's lift our hands and ask God's anointing upon his word. Jesus, I thank you for your word. God, I ask that you would minister right now through your truth. We want to discover from the scriptures of truth what you have for us in the new millennium. Give us your plan, not my plan, not someone else's plan, but God, your plan. You've got a plan that's going to change this world. You've got a plan that's going to deliver us from every shackle that holds us captive. God, you've got a plan to bring a Holy Ghost revival in this hour. I ask for you to do it now in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, I receive your touch. I receive your hand. I give you access to my life. Change what you want to change. Strengthen what you want to strengthen. In Jesus' name, do it now. Do it now in Jesus' name. And everyone said amen. amen. God bless you. You may be seated. Daniel in chapter 1 settled the commitment issue in his life once and for all. He purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the portion of the king's meat. And he created an insulation around him that would not allow him to be affected by the ungodliness of the world that surrounded him. Because his conviction did not come from peer pressure or what anybody else thought. It came from the inside. It came from the heart. Convictions can't be just a policy that is mandated from someone else. But convictions have to be something that is internalized, that comes from the heart. If we're going to preach and we're going to be filled with the passion of God's Spirit in this hour, we got to preach from the heart. If we are going to see a Holy Ghost move like we've never seen before, we're going to have to pray from the heart. I want to put my heart in this thing with everything that I've got and determine what the Holy Ghost wants for me and go for it with everything in my mind and spirit. He also settled the issue that he's not going to bow to the pressure of the Babylonian regime. He said, I am not going to allow the treachery of the satraps that have tried to put me in the lion's den, change my prayer life, or what I'm going to do for God. He continued his passion for prayer, regardless of what the satraps did. They put him in the lion's den, but he was victorious. Does it make any difference how the devil tries to ensnare us as we heard last night from Brother Urshan? I don't care how he tries to ensnare us. There is victory in Jesus to overcome any adversity or infirmity that we're faced in this hour. God is going to give personal victory to our people that can come out of their chains and not be traumatized by what they've got to face in this hour. Because the world's going to try to change our confession and our profession of faith, uh, but they're not going to change mine, and I don't believe they're going to change yours. They're going to do what they can to steal all the joy out of serving God, all of the life out of serving God, uh, but I refuse to get beat up by the enemy uh, when I know the one who can pull me out of the lion's den. 
I refuse to get frustrated and disillusioned in this hour. I don't care who is risen up or who falls down. I've got one desire and to realize God's plan for this next millennium. We've got to make it to 2000. If it's the coming of the Lord, let it be. But if it's a fresh anointing and fire for revival, let it be. Come on, let's get out of the lion's den. Shake yourself. Yes, we're going to face persecution. Yes, they're not going to like our message. Yes, they're going to call us a few names and place a lot of labels on us. But I still believe that Jesus Christ is the Lord of this church. But this is what bothers me about the whole story is that Daniel had already settled the commitment issue, come out of the lion's den, was victorious, but he still had to go through five touches before he could get God's plan. I mean that God brought him to this point of deliverance in his own life just to let him know this isn't the end, Daniel. This is just the beginning. What we think of as the end, God thinks of as the beginning. Because I want to do more than just give you personal victory. I want to show you what's going to happen in the next millennium. And I am going to touch your life with some things. And I want you to understand that Daniel fell asleep while the angel was trying to communicate God's plan to him. After the victory of the lion's den, he falls asleep. And the angel had to touch him to waken him up. I want you to know that you can settle the commitment issue and the holiness issue in your life and still be asleep to what God wants to do. We can sit there in our holiness and in our righteousness and be absolutely clueless about what God's going to do in this generation. But we need to receive a touch from an angelic visitor in this service to wake up the United Pentecostal Church or we're going to miss what God has. It's time to wake up and realize it's more than just a shout and happy and clappy. God's got a mission and God's got a plan and we're in it. I'm reminded of Simon Peter asleep in the prison and he was locked in chains and an angel was working out all kinds of deliverance on his behalf and he was asleep to the entire process. Until the angel had to smite him on the side and waken him up. And all of a sudden he realized the doors are open, the chains are loose. All you got to do is get up and walk in it. I want you to know that while you're here it because of the times. My God is sending angels back to your local churches to knock chains off of people that you've witnessed to, that you've put seed in. I'm talking about churches that would not open the door to your ministry and your apostolic preaching. God's going to change the minds of our saints and let them know that there is value to apostolic ministry in this hour. It's time to wake up to a deliverance that's already been worked out on our behalf. Come on, let's put our shoes on. Let's walk into what God has for us. Wake up! God's got a plan! You see, Daniel knew how to do what the Jews called the Passover effect. I read Chaim Raphael, who gave an understanding of this word Passover. It's a very difficult word for the translators because they've always argued for centuries what it means. He's traced his original meaning back to the limping dance. It goes all the way back to Jacob when the angel touched him after a wrestling match and he limped or halted upon his thigh. But you see, he still danced because he recovered a covenant relationship that was going to realize God's plan for his life. 
You see, I don't mind God touching me and causing me to limp if I can come into a relationship that's going to do more than just give me a house and a car and a fine living. But he's going to help me realize the plan that he has for my life. And I don't know how you feel about it, but I got a revelation. We don't have to be perfect for God to use us. We can be limping and still dancing. We can go through the Passover. The Passover effect is this, essentially. What's happening on the outside doesn't have to change what's happening on the inside. Because we know the power of the blood. I might be limping, but I'm still dancing because I know that my God, through his blood, has redeemed me and wants to use me in this hour. See, you got to get touched. Not hit. Not shaken. Not slapped. Touched. That means you got to be sensitive enough that when God just breezes by you, you're ready to leap into action. And I've been preaching in Pentecostal churches for a very long time on the local church level as an evangelist for 14 years. And I'm going to tell you, we can be some very difficult people to move at times. And preachers are amongst that group. I still love you. But it is a difficult thing to move some preachers. But I don't want you to be like that when this hour and God is wanting to do a great work. We need to be touched by the hand of the Lord and leap into action. If he just breezes by you, you ought to be able to feel the touch and the breath of God. God shouldn't have to create tragedy and cause us to go through all sorts of trauma before we wake up to what his plan is. We need some Daniels that have an excellent spirit that can respond to the touch. You see, if God's got to shake you, he's probably trying to get rid of you rather than use you. Everything that can be shaken will be shaken. That's not a good statement. That's not a favorable meaning. But I want to feel that touch from the hand of the Lord. If God's moving in Ethiopia, I want to be a part of it. If God's moving in Papua New Guinea, I want to lend my faith to it and say, go get them. I've never been there and I've never seen it, but I believe it. Because something's touched my life. I felt a breeze. Something's moving. God's doing the work. Now, I'm sorry. But I'm going to have to say it because I feel it in the spirit. Now, when I was just a kid preacher, and I was just a teenage preacher running around preaching, it was really, it was really funny to watch the expressions on everybody's face when I would preach. We're going to have a greater than the book of Acts revival in this hour. And I, I, everybody just thought that was so cute. And they thought that one day I would settle down. But I have been preaching that all of my life. And I want you to know, to have the opportunity to be a part of it, to see it, to see it, to know it, to feel it, to, to, to know it's happening. Now, now, God's not used me yet in this thousands realm. But you know what? Uh, one day he will. Because you see, I'm not mad because God's using him. I'm not mad about that. As a matter of fact, everything I've dreamed of ever since I was a teenager is happening. God's touched us. We need to wake up. Wake up. Don't make God hit you and shake you. Let the touch stir you. But we've got to go on. We've got to go on to the second touch. Because it's important that we get there. Because this is when Daniel was praying. 
And he wasn't just praying a Santa Claus list. He just got finished reading from the book of Jeremiah about the prophecy that God was going to restore Jerusalem and Israel. It wasn't how long he prayed, but it was the spirit in which he prayed in and what he was praying for. The first thing he did in response was fall on his face and begin to repent. That was the first response that he gave to the scriptural prophecy that there was a chance. And if there was the slightest chance that God would work again and restore his Jerusalem and his nation, he was going to pray that into existence. But the first response was repentance. And if we are going to realize God's plan, he's going to have to touch us in our praying. And we can't just pray any kind of prayers. Oh, God, help me do this, do that. We've got to start praying kingdom prayers and praying prophecies into existence. we got to get serious about this praying business. Because this is when God's going to impart not only understanding but skill. This is when Daniel received an impartation of skill. We're living in a very complex, difficult hour. And we a lot of times have been long on zeal and short on skill. But we need to be skillful in this hour in dealing with government and people around us. Because God is wanting to use this church to do a great work. But he can't if we refuse the impartation of skill. But it doesn't come by just simply sitting around. We've got to waken up and we've got to begin to pray and repent. <laughs> Brother Cole said something to me in conversation several months ago that really blew my mind. He said that he didn't want just everybody praying for him because they was praying him into more trouble instead of out of it. And you know, I got to thinking about that. You didn't explain it, and I was going to ask you, but I decided to go pray about it. And I believe the Lord gave me an answer. I believe that I know why they were praying you more into trouble than out of trouble. And I found it in the book of Revelation when the angel has to take our prayers and add incense to it in order for them to become a sweet-smelling savior. I went back into the Old Testament to the law of first use when incense was first put to use and it was put to use by Aaron to save Israel from the rebellion of Korah. And the reason why our prayers a lot of times don't work is because there's no incense to them and incense is the spirit of submission and the removal of rebellion. And when our people are praying, they're praying their preferences into existence and their Santa Claus list into existence. This is not Burger King. This is not have it your way. This is God's church. You want your preacher to act a certain way and be a certain way, but that's not going to work. We've got to start praying with a spirit of submission. If there was ever a time I was not submitted to these pastors on this platform while I was a saint in their church, I would hope they'd have enough sense to come and knock me upside the head and say, you better get that rebellion out of your heart because praying don't work until you repent of your rebellion. There's only one way prayer's going to move God, and that's when we put incense with it. We need that spirit of submission. Whatever you want, God, do it. However you want to use him, do it. And I will respond. We need to let God touch our praying. And let God show us what to pray for. Because if we get to praying right, and we've already seen what the World Network of Prayer can do. In just a few months, in just a short time, There has just been a Holy Ghost revival breakout everywhere 
as a result of people praying, not their lists, but their burden and their heart. See, I found out that the Bible says, Daniel, you are greatly beloved. In the Hebrew, that actually means God loves you so much he wants to make you happy. And the reason why God was showing him the plan is I want to make you happy. I want to give you my kingdom. I want to share with you in all the bounty that I have to give. I believe that it is the good pleasure of the Father to give to his children the kingdom. I believe God wants to make us happy. I don't think God wants to make us all sad and bent over with our burdens. I believe God loves this church. And he wants to give us the desires of our hearts. I just want to know, what do you want from the Lord? What do you want from God? If you want it and you desire it, then you need to seek for it and begin to pray kingdom prayers. I think that we ought to just stop for just a moment here. Take somebody's hand and let's repent. Before we go any further and because of the times... I want us to repent. God, forgive us. Have mercy. Lord, there's a place in the kingdom. God, there's a place. There's a plan. Awaken us. Show us, Lord. Give us what you have in Jesus' name. Before this meeting goes one step further, we need to repent and ask God to forgive us of any rebellion in our hearts so our prayers will begin to pray and begin to be effective, fervent prayers that avail much. Jesus, do it now in Jesus' name. Lord, give us that praying touch. Prayer really does count. In Jesus' name. I hasten on. The third touch. This was the time when there was severe warfare in the heavenlies. When he first began to ask God to reveal to him the plan, the answer was sent. But there was a slight delay. But you see, the angel began to talk to him. And he got on his hands and his knees as if he was in a position of obeisance. The angel was trying to communicate the word and all he could do was tremble. And he shook. And it wasn't until he received the third touch that he was able to hear the word. You know, sometimes we can't receive the truth about who and what we are. And God's got to touch us that somehow through the preaching of the Word, we don't mind God revealing what we really are so we can get it out of the way and go on. God, I want to receive that touch that will open my ears to hear what the Holy Ghost is saying in this hour. And God, if you want to show me where I'm going wrong, then show me so I can make it right and do what you want me to do. Somebody needs to open up their ears and listen for the word of the Lord. Brother Mangan said it last night. We've been entertained long enough. We need to hear from the Holy Ghost. Preaching's not designed to be entertainment. It's designed to minister His truth to your heart. And when you can receive the Word of God and hear it, now the devil's going to fight that with everything he's got. The devil doesn't want you to hear it. And the fourth touch, he doesn't want you to speak it. Because after he heard it, he was dumb. He couldn't talk. I'm talking about Daniel was having some problems with this. And we've got just as many problems as he does. 
then God's got to keep touching us so we can work through all of these little emotional barriers we have up against the plan of God and get rid of the preferences that are against the plan of God. Go on and open up your heart and give God access to your life and let him touch your opinions and let him touch that little attitude. Let him touch that little prejudice. When God gives us revival, he's going to save anybody and everybody that wants to come. It doesn't make any difference. And if you can't let God touch your little prejudice, you're going to be outside of what God's going to do in the next millennium. You might as well go on and open up your little opinion and your little attitude up to God right now and say, Lord, whatever you want me to be, I will be because I want to see the plan realized. If this church ever gets touched at evening, we're going to rise up with a new attitude, a new opinion, an understanding that God died for the whole world. It's our place. It's ours. We can seize this moment. I don't think we have to take a back seat to anybody. We are the people of the name of Jesus. We understand the oneness of God. Let's go forth and take what's ours. Hallelujah. Now, I love Dr. Maxwell, but he said he come for the singing and not the preaching. Well, I come for the preaching and not the singing. Because I'm going to tell you the word of the Lord needs to be in us like a burning fire. But we don't just need to hear it. We need to tell it. And the devil's going to fight the telling of it just as well as the hearing of it. Because once you hear this, you've got to tell somebody about it. You can't just sit around dumb. God's going to touch us and give us a spirit of boldness so that we can go out with skill and tell everybody we meet, Jesus loves you. Jesus can change your life. Jesus can bring you out of darkness. I've got a vision of Messiah. He's got a mission. He's got a ministry. And it's powerful. And it's able to bring in everlasting righteousness. He's able to bring anointing in this hour. Jesus still works in the same dimension he did in the beginning. He still works. Believe that God is showing us. We are receiving the understanding and the skill. But we've got to also realize But the angel said, the only reason why I'm here, I have come for thy words. Because you've talked us into doing it. You have talked us into coming into your life and giving you this plan. And that means you got to talk it with everybody. You got to talk it with people. You got to let people know you believe in Jesus. I believe that there is a word that God has put in our spirit, and I like to talk revival with other people. But it's a shame that you can't share revival reports, and you can't share great things with some people because they get upset with you. We've got to change that. If people can't talk revival to you, you'll never get the angel to come and give you the plan. You got to start talking about it and you got to start revealing it. You got to start saying it. I want it. I like it. I love it. I think it's the most wonderful thing that's happening to us ever. I'm excited about it, if you can't tell. I think that if we're going to do the work of God, we ought to get excited about it. Don't just sit there and go to sleep today. Uh, Wake up uh, and get excited about it. Some of us sit through a whole service and look like we're mad at the world. Uh, You need to put a smile on your face every once in a while. Soured up attitude is not synonymous with spirituality. You need to put the glory of God on your face and say, I'm glad to be a Christian in the 1990s. Yes, it's tough. Yes, we got problems. Yes, the whole world seems to be coming unglued. But I've been touched by a supernatural touch. 
Yes, families are coming apart. The government's messed up. But I'm going to tell you, there's still a Jesus. And he's got a ministry. And he wants to give it to the United Pentecostal Church. Come on, we need to start talking it to one another. We got revival in Ethiopia. 50,000. Woo! Hallelujah! Talk it! Because I have found that the angel doesn't visit those who do not talk it. The plan's never given to those that can't receive the report. Because, you see, you've got to learn how to have faith in the report before you get the results. Now, that's biblical and it's scriptural. Who hath believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? I'll tell you to whom the arm of the Lord is revealed. To those who believe the report. When you start talking the report, God's going to reveal his arm. Now, this arm revealing stuff is an ancient warrior practice. That they, they had a lot of they had a lot of hand to hand combat back there. Didn't have all the technology. So what they would do is they would line up and they would tear their sleeves off. And they would flex their muscles at the enemy to try to intimidate them and let them know how well trained and how well prepared they are. We're fixing to whoop your hide. And they just start flexing their muscle like that. And they would just let them know, we know we're going to get you today. It was an act of intimidation. Well, I just want you to understand that if you'll start talking the report, the angel's going to come into your life. And he's going to give you a plan. And then God's going to rip off his sleeves. And he's going to start flexing his muscle. And he's going to say, devil, you remember what I did, it, did to you at Calvary? You better get out of here. You better leave this church alone. I'll tell you why we're seeing revival. Somebody's been talking about it. Somebody. They got criticized for it. They got put down for it. Uh, but they still kept talking it uh, and saying it and speaking it. Uh, I've come for thy words. Uh, you've been talking it. Uh, I'm going to come give it to you now. Keep talking it and I'm going to give it to you. And I'm going to rip my sleeves off. And I'm going to whip everything in sight. It's in this place. It's right now. It's not coming. It's here. Start talking it. You say, well, I'm not seeing it in my local church. Just keep talking it. Keep speaking it. Keep believing the report. Keep upholding the report. Yes, God's given. He's going to give it to me. Talk it. Tell somebody about it. And the angel is going to come. And in spite of the circumstances, in spite of all of the adversity, the angel's going to touch you at evening time. And there's going to be a light that's going to shine. <laughs> Woo! The last touch, and then I'm done. The fifth touch. And that is, whenever Daniel fainted. The word faint there actually means done in. He was done in. But God touched him and strengthened him. And what I want God to do, and I pray this for our leaders, I pray that God will strengthen them. Make them strong. Make them be able to continue to go beyond what their physical ability can take them. We need that kind of strength right now. Where we can be strong on the inside. And stand against every adversity, every wile of the devil, every fiery dart that is hurled our way. Because we have been made strong by the touch of the angel. Now, I believe that you already understand this, but this is not for weaklings. 
This kind of stuff is not for people that don't want to get shot at. We're going to have to have the strength to endure if we're going to get God's plan for this hour. So what I say to our leaders, stay strong. Brother Anthony, stay strong. Brother Mangan, stay strong. All of the pastors of the United Pentecostal Church, stay strong. Stand up on what you believe and stay strong. God's going to touch you and strengthen you with the power. He's going to reveal his arm and he's going to show forth his might. And there won't be anything to oppose you. There won't be anything to stand against you. The revival is ours now. And it's time for you to take it now. You say, but I'm so intimidated. You need to throw that intimidation off of you right now. And you need to go for everything God's got. We don't have to hang our head for anybody. We have been made strong in the power of his might. Stand up and take it. Well, I'm not as educated as someone else. I can't do this or I can't do that. I don't care what your skills are. God can touch you and give you what you need to make it happen to the glory of God. God wants to give you the plan. Shall we all stand? God wants to give you the plan for the new millennium. He gave it to Daniel. He's faced with the same kind of government situation we're faced with. But you see, he didn't change. Say, all of this is going to affect our young people. No, it's not. Because we're going to create a Passover effect. And even though we limp, we're going to dance. And we're going to put incense with our prayers. And we're going to keep talking it. And God's going to do it. Because we've been touched at evening.